Hello everyone, my name is Ishita Mangal. I'm a fashion designer and a content creator. I really felt like this video was long overdue because we moved from like 5,000 subscribers to almost 500k now in just a couple of months, which is crazy. Thank you so much for engaging with my content the way you do, for loving me, for supporting me. I see my comment section and I am overwhelmed with joy and love every single day. So thank you so much for doing that. I also wanted to come and thank you guys for this award. We won the Cosmopolitan Fashion Influencer Popular Choice Award. This can only happen with your love, your vote. So I am really grateful for each and every one of you who took out two minutes to vote for me. This is a really big deal. It is the biggest award in the fashion influencer category in India and uh, we have all achieved this together. I also wanted to thank you guys for this YouTube 100k plate. I got this a while back and I've been meaning to do, you know, a similar video since then. But, you know, after both of these big achievements that we've all had together, I felt like there was, it was imperative for me to come and make this video. So thank you so much for both of these awards. This would not have been possible without all of you. This is silver, this is silver, my choti is also silver, it's all like coming together beautifully. <laughs> Today I'm going to answer some questions that you guys asked me in my post. Uh, Muskan is over here, she's going to pick out random questions from that comment section and I'm going to answer them to the best of my ability. So without further ado, let's just get into the video. So uh, my childhood, I was a science student, I was always very ambitious, I was a nerd. Um, I was a geek when it came to studying. Um, I used to love science. I actually especially used to love math. So I had physics, chemistry, maths with computers in uh, my school and I was very passionate about computers and math. I used to love coding. I used to love uh, solving problems and you know things like that. I was prepping for IIT. Um, for engineering and that's the college that I wanted to go to actually but um, and I was very like I used to study like 16 17 hours a day probably more than that uh, for two years so you know for any of you who have studied for PCM or prep for IIT you know that that padhai is just completely different so I think by the end of those two years I was just tired of studying not because I was not passionate about it still but I was just exhausted and I wanted to switch into something else and that's where uh, I don't know how fashion designing came into the picture but I I definitely considered applying for it um, in all colleges and that's what we did. Um, so I gave my entrance exams for IIT, AIEEE, a lot of other colleges, some from outside India as well and then some architecture colleges and then fashion design colleges and then I got through a couple of them but when I got through NIFT I think I was the happiest and I think that is when I decided that this is what I want to do. So I did Bachelor of Fashion Design from NIFT Bangalore. It's a four year program. And during that program, I also went to Milan for one semester on an exchange program, again for fashion design, which was an amazing experience because I went to Milan during fashion week, which is a dream come true for any fashion design college going student. Uh, so it was a different experience altogether. After that, I interned with Rohit Gandhi Rahul Khanna. Um, so I worked with them for some time. And then after that, I started my own label, which was called Quo. It was a women's wear pret label. And so we used to make shirts, tops, and a lot of Western wear, trousers, jackets, you know, stuff like that. And specializing in women's wear shirts. So that's what we used to do. I was very passionate about it. We also did Lakme Fashion Week as a Gen X designer, emerging designer, one sponsored show. So we did all of these things and it was a lot of fun. So just before the pandemic, actually, I started making videos because people used to come to me that, Ishita, we don't really understand how to style the clothes that you're making. So I was like, okay, let me make videos, you know, uh, on how to like style those clothes. So that's what I started doing. And then suddenly we hit the pandemic. So there were no more clothes. Factories were shut, everything was shut. So I was like, okay, I can't manufacture anything. How can I make the videos on the same clothes? So I continued making videos because by that time audience was growing, you know? And I continued making videos with my own wardrobe, with my own clothes and 
you know and uh, yeah and that's how we started making content and then this picked up so much that i never started my fashion label again because i love this more i love this um i want to give it that full concentration i want to give it my full time because it it requires a lot of effort and a lot of time and effort goes into building uh this as well so yeah that's where i'm at right now script writer this question oh my god i get so often i am my own script writer we have a team of a lot of people but we don't have a script writer yet um the reason for this is just i just don't feel the need right now maybe i think sometime soon we might start onboarding a script writer but right now it's just me um i remember initially when i started it used to take me about 2 to 3 days to write one script which was a really cumbersome and very long process because i mean i don't know for whatever reason it used to take me so long but now it's just within minutes we can write a script also because i've written so many now that it's just it's just automatic you know it's not something that is taking a lot of time anymore so i write my own scripts yeah what kind of life you had i'll be very honest like with me i think when we talk about a privileged childhood you know the first thing that comes to your mind is the financial privilege which of course is very important it's something that not a lot of people have so but when we talk about privilege i believe there are two kinds of privileges there's the financial privilege and there's a the privilege of making your own choices you know when you have the freedom to make your own choices from the beginning that is a different kind of privilege so i feel like some people might have the financial privilege but they don't have the freedom to make their own choices and often if they do choose to make those choices that they want to make they won't have the financial backing because somebody who is doing that may not support them you know especially in your childhood and uh, it's sometimes the other way because sometimes you have a parents and uh, you have parents or a support system around you that will support your choices but you don't have the financial backing to accelerate that forward you can't you know so i do believe that these are two types and of course there are people like me and i'll be very honest that i was just born with the highest form of privilege where you feel like you have the resources and you know you have the financial capability to pursue your own choices and choices that are yours and not being forced down upon you so i really felt like i had both of these growing up i do think that that is what my childhood was uh today if i have made a certain decision to start my own label to choose fashion designing or to choose to start my own channel and if something doesn't work out or goes wrong or whatever it is i know that only i am responsible for this because i have made these conscious decisions to um pursue these things my fashion inspiration my fashion inspiration my fashion icon i have to say and i know this might not be the most popular choice for the people who are watching this but i love Sonam Kapoor I have a very valid reason as to why I believe in this so when I started making my own label right um it was back in 2014 and um, this was when Instagram was still growing when Facebook was there but you know like the our social media consumption and online shopping and all of those things have increased now back then in 2014 almost 9 years ago it was not so much social media presence and all of that was there but you were not moving things through it you were still needed a physical shop that was the first priority online shop hai ya nahi at that time was you know was kind of secondary but physical shop presence in exhibitions all of that was needed during that time i remember sonam kapoor was the first person for whatever reason she was inclined to work towards fashion i think she was passionate about it and you could see that in you know in the way that she talks about fashion or wears fashion but she was the first one who started wearing small indian designers and who started posting pictures on instagram 
tagging the brands and supporting them and from then onwards there was this whole phenomenon there's this whole celebrity celebrities always existed but nobody supported labels like and nobody was so inclined towards fashion and then after that suddenly everyone you know used to post uh their pictures in outfits or airport looks this and that or you know celebrities going for events and tagging designers so some of them would only wear international designers but people like sonam kapoor and there were many more who would also support small upcoming indian labels and that was such a big thing for people like me who were just starting out because people who are just starting out they don't have those kind of budgets we're already paying salaries or uh, renters you know there's so much expenditure that goes in raw material when you start a fashion label that time there were just bloggers but you couldn't even afford to pay them or let alone celebrities so for a celebrity of that status to come and support indian labels it was a very big thing because it brings us uh, in the forefront you know when that happens we are able to manufacture more things and create more jobs we are able to hire more tailors or more carigars you know so there's a whole trickle down effect in the whole community which happens when a celebrity or influencer chooses to wear a, or support a small indian label this whole thing this whole phenomena was started by her so i have the utmost respect for her because i don't think what she did for the entire fashion community uh, i don't think it is spoken about enough and that's why i keep saying that she will always be my fashion icon because you know you can't be a fashion icon by just dressing pretty and looking good i think there are a lot of people who do that but to actually support the fashion industry and to begin a revolution of that stage is what really i think makes you a fashion icon so for me she's hands down my favorite icon or uh, inspiration whatever you may call it <laughs> perfect jawline honestly it's so strange people keep asking me now you have a perfect jawline perfect jawline this is not what i wanted i would say 4 years ago i used to hate my face i used to hate that i have this jawline i used to not like a chiseled face at all because this whole contouring and all of that has started happening now in the 5 plus 5 6 years i think maybe less i don't know but before that i used to feel like i needed a chubby face i wanted more fat in my face i used to google how to add more fat in your face because i used to feel like my face is so thin there's no result apparently nobody was searching how to add fat in your face i was the one who was doing that and found no results of it so i started doing face yoga because i thought that that would add some fat but um i do practice face yoga but that's just to sort of keep the muscles tight or whatever i don't even know if it helps it feels good and that's why i do it but it's so strange like what we have is apparently something that everyone wants so you know like how the grass is always greener on the other side i didn't even like my face till so many people told me that oh my god you have such a perfect jawline and i'm like really like oh okay you know so if people think that this is great then let me not try to add fat to my face you know it was like that so it's very weird how we are wired to constantly think that what we have is not good enough or you know we're always wanting to go in a different direction uh but thank you so much i have done nothing for it this is the all genes uh if i'm being honest and if i'm truly being honest i didn't even like my face for most of my life so thank you so much for liking it it makes me like it you have spray on the right one <laughs> no there's no spray i don't know why i do that honestly i do feel i'll be honest i do feel that my left side is better than my right side your face is always asymmetrical and uh, i know that other people probably can't tell but i do like my left side better so i end up doing this a lot more but now that people have started pointing out and making a conscious effort to also show my right side <laughs> but it just happens there's no sprain here guys <laughs> फनी यू नो 
I think there was one video that I made in Hindi, like one video long time back. It was a branded video. The brand wanted me to speak in Hindi, and I made that video. And somehow, so many people in real life and otherwise have also told me on that video. Also, there were so many comments where every time I speak Hindi, people think I have Shin Chan's voice. Like my Hindi voice is Shin Chan's voice. I don't know why uh, that happens. So I stopped doing videos in Hindi only. Like. I don't know when I speak in English, people are like, "Oh my God, nice voice!" ये वो कुछ बोल देते हैं कि बेकार आवाज है ये वो अच्छी अच्छी बात है ये भी बोल देते हैं. It's very important to keep your feet on the ground. <laughs> But uh, whenever I speak in Hindi, like, you sound like Shinchan, you sound like Shinchan. I'm like, oh God. Uh, But I love Shinchan, so it's a compliment. Thank you. <laughs> What? <laughs> What are these questions? Who is asking these questions? You guys are getting very personal. I think whatever the experience was you guys should be very grateful because without my ex my content would be shit there would be no content I think I'm very grateful for whatever experiences I had because that's what keeps me and my content alive and you entertained right so thank you to all my exes for existing and for these wonderful experiences <laughs> I get this asked a lot as well so When I started making videos, it was in 2020. There were already so many amazing people making content on fashion. Uh, you know, everyone was doing a great job. I felt like I needed to stand out to be noticed, and that is primarily the reason why I started making fashion content with humor. I made a genuine effort to look for something that would make me stand out. Also, another reason is I did start. by making uh, my videos the way everyone did but honestly even i couldn't watch those videos i said like, this is so boring it's not me it didn't feel like it was me um, you know posing and doing all of that i felt like i am only not able to watch my video why will i expect the audience to watch my video so i started adding humor and i suddenly felt like it's me in fact when i started making this kind of content i thought that i would be hated i thought people would hate me because essentially you're making fun of the audience you know there were times when i used to make fun of me as well and i still do but you're also making cracking jokes on the audience so i thought that people would hate me you know but i was like i like this content i am liking how it is coming out i can watch it so let me just put it any way and we'll see what the reaction is like now it is by chance that people also started liking this so i felt like i'm very grateful that the audience allowed me to be me and recognized that um you know the kind of effort that was going behind this content and yeah so and that's where my humor journey started now we started making very different types of if you go back to my old instagram videos like in 2020 we'll find there's humor but very different in a very different way so we then um, you know transformed it in different different ways we we made different versions of fashion with humor to finally arrive at what we do and i'm sure at some point we will also tweak this a little bit uh, you know so that kind of development you have to constantly do because you have to cater to how the audience wants you want according to the times that you're existing in but i think fashion with humor will always stay with me first what we do is we decide the look uh sometimes there's an idea a draping idea that I'll have or you know we decide the look first about which look we want to is it going to be a cotton kurta is it going to be everyday wear office wear formal wear sari dress you know sometimes festivals are coming so it has to be according to that so we'll decide all of that first then we'll put together something an outfit with the jewelry what jewelry what hair what makeup you know the entire thing we will decide first then we will script it because the scripting is done according to what i'm wearing if the jewelry is blingy then we'll be like you're missing bling in your life you know something like that so is always done according to the item that is <laughs> that is being used and um, then we will do scripting and then we will actually shoot the video so we shoot the video then according to the script and uh, you know and then of course we've decided the location and everything also based on the outfit then we will film it then we will send it to the editor who will edit it uh, based on the script sometimes we make changes 
during the editing stage to the voiceover because sometimes you know you'll write something it'll sound funny but when you speak it and translate it into actual video it might not be as funny you know so sometimes i've had to change that because it doesn't feel like it's sinking it doesn't make sense you know so many times you have to do that and that is a constant part of the process but it's all planned in advance like nothing is last minute today if i'm releasing a video it has most likely been shot 10 days before sometimes 2 weeks before so we work in advance like that um so that tomorrow if i decide that i'm having a burnout which is very real or if um i have to take a break uh, for whatever reason then i still have some content that i can put so yeah so that's it guys those are all the questions that we can answer today i think it's a pretty long video now but thank you so much for watching this video for engaging with my content the way you guys do i am truly grateful for all the love that i get from this community i am going to keep showing up on my shorts anyway but i'm also going to try and make more long form videos because i feel like that's what truly connects me to you so thank you so much for um watching this video again please consider subscribing to my channel uh we have a lot of fun here i will see you next time bye